And now we're going to do the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass states that the stuff you start with has to be the same as the stuff you end with. If you start with 34 grams of reactant, you're going to have to have 34 grams of product when you're all done. If you start with the element zinc, you're going to have to end with element zinc. Things may look a little bit different. Atoms are going to rearrange. You're going to form compounds. You might form elements. But the elements have to be the same on both sides, and the masses have to be the same on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by using zinc. Now, this is not the kitchen zinc. It's also not what ships like the Titanic do. Get it? <laughs> zinc. Right down to the bottom of the ocean. Now, if I start with zinc, That means I'm going to have to end up with zinc when all is said and done. What am I going to react with this zinc? We're going to have a little hydrochloric acid, HCl. This is the good stuff. Now what this means is that if we're starting with zinc, and we're starting with hydrogen, and we're starting with chlorine, we're going to have to end up with these same three elements on the other side. Let me show you. Before we begin, you must always remember to put on your handy dandy spiffy little goggles. Stylin. Okay, now into the reaction chamber, we're going to place our zinc. Like so. And I'm going to take some of this zinc and I'm going to place it into this flask. Now mind you, This metal is fairly non-reactive, so it's pretty safe to do it this way. And to that, we're going to add our hydrochloric acid. Now, an acid is just a gas that's been dissolved in water. So hydrochloric acid is hydrogen chloride gas that's been dissolved in water. And we've got a six molar solution of it here, which is half strength, so I've got to be very careful with this. So let's pour this in. and see what happens. Well, it seems as though we're getting some bubbling action going on here. And that bubbling is producing gas that's filling this balloon right here. And we're going to try to figure out exactly what kind of gas is in this balloon once it stops filling. Proper lab technique is to clean up spills right away. Now, I'm going to have to add a little bit more hydrochloric acid because it looks like I had too much zinc and too little hydrochloric acid. So to do that, I'm going to pinch this off and pour more in. Oh, yeah. Woo! That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's interesting to note that chemists also make the best dishwashers. Hey, hurry up, clean it up quick. All right, that should be enough. So what I'm going to do is detach the balloon. Tie it off like that and then Watch the magic. Well, isn't that interesting? The balloon is floating. What do you suppose could possibly be in that balloon? Well, according to this reaction, we're going to have to end with the same stuff we started with. Now, what kind of gas floats in a balloon? Helium, right? Well, unfortunately in this case, not helium because we don't have helium to start with. Not only that, helium is a noble gas. Helium can't be formed by chemical reaction. Noble gases aren't involved in chemical reactions. So that can't possibly be helium gas. Not only that, the law of conservation of mass says that if we're going to make helium gas, we're going to have to start with helium gas somewhere. 
Do you see any helium gas here? I don't. So what could it possibly be? Let's work it out. Zinc and the chlorine combine to form zinc chloride. And that leaves hydrogen, which is a gas, and it's even lighter than helium is to float in that balloon. Now, I'm going to prove to you that there's hydrogen in that balloon and not helium. But before we do that, remember the law of conservation of mass? Whatever we start with, we have to finish with. We start with one zinc, we end with one zinc. We start with one hydrogen, but we end with two. That can't be a good thing. So in order to balance that, I'll put a two in front of the hydrogen. So now we've got two hydrogens. And check it out. We've got two chlorines here. We've got two chlorines here. This reaction is now balanced. You balance by putting coefficients in the front. Hint, never change a formula to balance. OK, now for the next part of the demonstration, to prove that there's really hydrogen in there. Now, in order to test to see if this is really hydrogen and not helium, remember, helium is a noble gas. That means it's not going to react. So if I, let's say, try to light it on fire, nothing should happen. But hydrogen is a group one element, which means it's extremely reactive, which means if I try to put a fire to it, something interesting might happen. Let's try. Of course, I don't want to hold this in my hand while doing it. <laughs> Fire, nice. Let's see how the balloon likes it. And this is why you don't want to try this at home. Happy birthday!